Hi guys, some of you are working on winter scenes for your final project and you came to me and asked me if I could show you how to create snow tracks in a plane. So let's go ahead and do that in this video. So what you see in this scene is basically a very dense plane, which is just a regular plane, polygon plane. It's about 20, sub, uh, 20 by 20 and it's got a lot of subdivisions as you can see. And the reason for the, that many subdivisions is because the, the amount of particles that we will be creating is based on the amount of vertices that we have on this on, on the object. Now, you need to play a balance game when it comes to the amount of the density of the object because you don't want to have too many uh, vertices because you will delay the amount of, uh, you will increase the rendering time. So you want to make sure that you balance that out so you can actually output this. And over here, I just have geometry for a sleigh. And the trees really are just for scene. They, they do not really do anything on this scene. And so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make sure that I select this and I want to turn it into a snow field. Right now, it's just a simple flat plane. Now, if I want to make this look like snow field, I want to apply a deformer to it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to select it and I want to switch my menu to the modeling menu. And I want to go under deform, texture, options. And so I want to make sure that this is under UV, which is what I want. And I'll go ahead and click Create. Now, the UV basically matches the direction in which my plane was created, and that's perfect. Now, this um, modifier, this deformer, what it does is it actually applies a texture to my geometry through which I can actually change parallel or similar to the way um, bump mapping works. But in reality, this is going to change the actual geometry. So let's go ahead and go into its attribute editor. Let's select it and select the go to the attribute editor. And let's go ahead and look under texture and apply a map. In this case, I'm going to apply a noise map. Now doing that automatically creates a very, very um, distorted plane. And we want to make use of the amplitude value to control how much of that deformation occurs. So I want just a blanketed feel of snow. So with some irregularities like this. So nothing fantastic, not very pronounced, something just soft like this. Now with that done, what I want to do is I want to select that object and I want to delete its history so that I delete the connection to the deformer node. So delete all by type history and you'll notice that I now have my geometry without any deformer. So I can now use this geometry to create the particle system that I want to use to create the snow tracks. To do so, I want to go ahead and select that field, switch my menu to the effects menu, and go under end particles to create a soft body. Now let's go ahead and go to its options and reset the options. By default, this will create a soft body out of that plane that will just take over the entire thing. So I have no reference other than the actual geometry itself. There's other options under this drop down that allows me to take advantage of, of certain features that this, um, this particle system has. And that is make uh, duplicate and make copy soft or duplicate make original soft. So I want to go ahead and make a copy soft. I want to go ahead and click, click on this one and I'll show you why in just a second. The, the main reason why I want this is because I want to go, I have the ability to come back to the original if I want to. So it's almost like it's creating a reference file. I will apply the particles to the reference file, but the original still remains in the background. I can go ahead and hide the original, which is this one, and I can go ahead and create a goal, and the goal being a value controlled by this weight between the copy and the original. So I can go ahead and deform the object by having the interaction with a solid object that goes through it. And then after a certain amount of time, the, uh, the deformation starts disappearing because it, it tries to go back towards the original object that has been hidden. So that's the reason why I choose this duplicate, make, duplicate makes off copy. Now I want to bring this value of weight down to zero. For now, we will change this on the attributes editor in just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and click create. Now with that done, what's going to happen is the field has been set up. I want to go to the side view and make sure that this is actually interact, that the snow will be interacting with the snow, with the sleigh. And it is, I see the legs touching the snow. So that's good. I want to make sure that the, the, the legs actually go through the snow so that they can create the tracks. 
So with that done, let's go over here to the outliner and you see that I created a copy of the plane. There it is. And it is there where I apply the actual particles. So that is the actual particle uh, object that we created. Now, th it is this that is going to interact with the geometry of whatever we select. So select that particle object. Let's go ahead and shift select over here on the scene on this leg for this lay. And I want to make that interaction between those two a collision. So that, make, that means that this is a passive solid object and these are particles that are waiting to be hit by a solid object, which is the leg. So let's go ahead and go under the end particles drop down and choose make collide. So doing that alone, it's going to go ahead and set this to interact with the particles. Let me go ahead and now select the entire slate and get some keyframes in there. So I want to change, uh, I want to use translate keyframes. So shift W on the first keyframe. Go to frame 60 and move this across the snow field. And that automatically creates my keyframe because I have auto keyframes activated. And let's rewind to the beginning and hit play. Now you'll notice that I am creating some kind of track in the snow. But if you notice underneath it, basically I'm creating a gigantic hole. That's what I'm doing. And the reason for that is because the collider basically is waiting. It's saying, okay, every time you hit a particle, go ahead and shoot it at whatever speed and with whatever force the object that is colliding with is going by it. Now, if you look at in detail of these things, let's go back in here into the particle solver and go under its particle shape. You will notice at the very top, I have something called conserve. Conserve is basically the value by which we tell the particle to either stay put or push in the direction in which it or move in the direction in, in which it is being pushed. In this case, this lay is going across the snow and is pushing the particles in that direction. So the, they will continue because that value of conservation is one. It's basically conserving the speed at which it was hit by the solid object. So let's rewind this and let's make that value zero. Hit return. And let's play this again. Now you'll notice that there's no particles being shot into space, but I'm still pushing them out of the way, creating a track, as you can see. And it is this track that is basically the interaction between the solid object and the particle system. So let's go ahead and rewind this. Let's watch it from the top. And there it is. I am creating the snow track. Now, now that this, this has been set up, let's go ahead and shift select, uh, select the particle object again, shift select the other leg, and simply go and particles, make collide again. And so now this other leg is also going to interact with the particle system. Let's go ahead and preview this. And there it is. I have the snow tracks being created. Now, there are some areas in which the snow is below, and that's why there's, there's no interaction in this place. So that's probably why you don't see the formation on the snow. It's below the actual sleigh leg. So if you want this to be continuous, you either move the snow feel up a little bit or the sleigh down, in my, in my case, a little bit, so that you don't have any gaps like this. Now you wanna you might want to have some gaps if if the thing one if you want it to look irregular because that gives a little bit more of a natural look, but that is a choice that you make as you are developing your scene. Now one of the the other thing that I wanted to talk about before I before we finish this is the option for the copy going back to this to the uh, plane that we had hidden, which is the original. This is the original plane and it's been hidden. So why is that there? Remember when we created this, the, the actual particle system and I said make soft copy and hide? This, was, this is the original geometry and that's what got hidden. This is the copy and this is the particle system. So now what this does for me, the, having created that option, having chosen that option, allows me to go back into the particles shape object uh, node under the attributes editor and if I scroll down, all the way to goal, weights, and objects. Basically, I have a way of making this interact with the original shape that I had in there, the actual field, this one here, the one that's hidden. So let me rewind this and increase the value of this if to about, let's say, 0.5. So when I do that, watch what happens on the interaction. 
Basically, the snow is going back to its original position as time passes by. So it looks less like, like snow, more like mud. Let me actually make this a little bit, a little less strong. That's probably 0 0.4, 0 0.35, let's say. And rewind and try this. So you see that the snow is going back to its original position. So if instead of going through snow, your sleigh was going through something like mud or sand, then this would be a better interaction and you have the ability to control how the particles return to their solid state as you know, as if you were just leaving tracks, temporary tracks as you go through the snow.